This video is sponsored by the Unreal Engine C++ Survival Game Course. In the course I show you how to make an online open world survival game from scratch in C++ and host it on Steam so you can play it with other people. I show you how to do everything from installing the tools to creating an inventory system, equipable clothing, weapons and vehicles, and tons of other stuff. The course comes with over $1,000 in assets alone and you can get it now on my Patreon for $25. You do get lifetime access even if you cancel. So if you're interested, the link is in the description below and enjoy the video. Welcome back guys. Today's video is going to be based around vehicles. We're going to be making uh, some C++ vehicles and we're also going to be implementing some of the functionality from Grand Theft Auto, such as the ability to control the car while it's in the air. Um, also in Grand Theft Auto, if you roll your car on its side or roll your car over, you can actually press A and D to actually flip the car back over. So uh, we're going to be implementing a vehicle and then some extra features like that. Uh, to get started, you will need to open the Epic Games Launcher, go to Unreal Engine, Marketplace, and then search for this pack called the Vehicle Variety Pack. It is completely free and will always be free. Uh, and then you simply just buy the pack. And then we're going to launch Unreal Engine 4.23. Uh, that's what I'm using in this video, but you could arguably use a different version. Um, but may as well use the same one that I'm using. Okay, so we're going to implement this pretty much from scratch. And so we'll go to C++ and select a basic code project. So this is just a project with no code in it apart from like a game mode. And I'm gonna call this, uh, we'll just call this vehicles. And then click on create project. Once you have downloaded the vehicle variety pack and you've created your project, just click on add to project and then all your projects will come up. And then you just need to click on the one that we just made. In our case, it's called vehicles. So just click on vehicles and then click add to project. Okay, so we're here inside of our project and really we only need to add one uh, class to the project. Um, and also you see this folder here, the vehicle variety pack. This just has all of the vehicle measures in it. Um, it does actually have some example vehicles. So you could technically drag one of these blueprints into the level and start driving right away. But the whole point of this video is we're making a C++ one and uh, you know teaching you something about vehicles at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to C++ classes and uh, inside of here we're going to go new C++ class. We're going to go to wield. So just type in wield and you can see that there is a wield vehicle pawn um, which by default uses the four wheel uh, wield vehicle movement component. So if you click on that I'm just going to call my one vehicle pawn so vehicle, pawn, create class. Next up, we need to define some of the input for our project. So I'm going to go to edit, project settings, and then click on the input tab on the side here. And now you can actually set up the input. So um, the input that we need for this project, we're going to need uh, an input called throttle. So to basically go forward or backwards, it's going to be W to go forwards. To go backwards, it's going to be the S key. And so for S, you want to do negative one. So basically, S is like the opposite of applying throttle. It's going to go backwards. We're going to create one called steer. So A. And then we're going to have D. So D is going to be one and A is going to be minus one. So A is going to steer left and D is going to steer to the right. So um, now we need some inputs for looking around. So we're going to add two more axis mappings. One of them is going to be called look up. So this is basically looking up and down. Uh, so we want the mouse Y, I believe. And then uh, for turning, we want to use the mouse X. And then the last thing I'm going to add is just an action mapping. And we're going to call this one handbrake. And we'll just make the space bar activate the handbrake on the car. And so that's pretty much all of the input we need for this project. Okay, so coming into Visual Studio, you can see that we have our uh, vehicle pawn here. We're going to open this guy up. And we'll basically just start adding functionality. I'm going to be pasting in the functionality because that just allows me to explain more in depth what I'm actually doing. So um, we'll start off by implementing some fairly simple 
uh, functions here, we're going to implement a constructor and the tick function. So the tick function is called every frame and we're going to use the tick function to actually control the car when it's in the air. Um, we also need the setup player input component. Uh, this is so that we can uh, register when the player presses WASD so we can actually move the car. We're going to create an apply throttle and an apply steering function uh, where the value is how much uh, throttle to apply. So one would be go forward, negative one would be go backwards. Um, the next thing is our looking around function. So basically look up and turn. We're going to add two functions for when you press the handbrake key and release the handbrake key. And we're also going to make a function called update in air control. So basically if the player is in the air or if they're flipped upside down, then we can use this function to actually move the car around in the air. Lastly, we need to create a couple of components. Now the wheeled vehicle actually comes with some components by default, but we also want to add a camera to the vehicle because by default it just doesn't have one for some reason. And we're also going to attach the camera to a spring arm. So just add these components like I've shown here. And let's get started by implementing a bunch of these functions. Okay, so coming into vehiclepawn.cpp, we're going to implement our constructor. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start chucking a bunch of functionality into the constructor. The uh, wheeled vehicle by default actually comes with uh, some vehicle movement. It comes with a vehicle movement, uh, U wheeled vehicle movement component. And so the wheeled vehicle movement component supports a bunch of really complex functionality. Um, stuff like, do we want to use an automatic gearbox or a manual gearbox? Uh, how should the car steer depending on its speed? You know, uh, what sort of torque should the car have? What should the, uh, how many RPMs should the engine have? It's super complicated. You can set up uh, whether you want a limited slip differential. I don't know if anyone watching this is like a car guy and knows what that means, but basically the amount of control you have over how the movement works is like super crazy. So what I'm going to do today is just use some sort of basic default settings that Epic uses in their template project. Um, but feel free to obviously uh, customize things to your tastes and everything's pretty well co uh, commented. So you can see what it does quite easily. We're going to start off with some tire load settings. Uh, so we'll actually start off by getting the uh, movement component. We will need to include some header files. I'm actually just going to include everything we need right now so we don't have to include any more. So just add all these header files that I have here because we're going to be using these later on. So the first thing we're doing is we're getting the vehicle movement component and this is how we're going to set up some of the stuff. So um, we're starting with these tire load settings. You can uh, hover over these or go to the definition and it will actually tell you some of the settings about the tire load. We're going to set up uh, the torque curve. So this is going to define how much torque we have on the vehicle. So I'm going to paste this in. So you can see we have the engine setup torque curve. And again, right click and go to definition and you can actually have a look at the various different uh, components of the engine setup. So you can see this is the amount of torque we have at a given RPM. So basically we're saying at um, 1800 RPM, you're going to have 500 units of torque and so on. So that's what this uh, torque curve is doing. Next up, we're going to add the steering curve. So this is how much steering we have at given um, speeds. So uh, at 120 Ks, we can only do 0.6 units of steering. So that's what the steering curve is controlling. Um, and we're using a curve to define this and you'll see when we go into the editor You can actually uh, modify this in the editor as well You don't have to do this in code, but I'm just doing it in code The next thing we're going to do is tell our vehicle movement that we want to use a limited slip differential and we're going to um, Use the front rear split as 0.65 So I think this means the front or uh, the back wheels get a little bit more spin than the uh, the front wheels um, we're going to use an automatic gearbox. So basically we're saying use auto gearbox. Um, it should take 150 milliseconds to switch gears. And then we have latency values and things like that as well. So I haven't done a ton of study on the actual movement component, but these are just some basic settings that Epic use in their template. So we're just going to go with those settings. Lastly, we're just going to create a couple of components. So what we'll do is we'll create a spring arm. So for anyone that doesn't know what a spring arm is, it's basically a component that you can attach things to 
and then it will adjust its position based on collision. So it's going to stop our camera going through walls, uh, to put it simply. So we're going to create a spring arm and then we're going to create the camera and we're going to put the camera on the spring arm so that it doesn't go through walls. So uh, camera equals create default subject camera and then we're just attaching it to our spring arm. Next up we're going to have a look at the tick and setup player input component functions. So we'll go ahead and create an implementation for both of these. So the tick function is very simple, basically just tick the actor and then update our in-ear control. Um, this function is going to be sort of complex, but I'll do my best to explain it when we come to that. Um, and then we need to implement the inputs. So basically bind the input to actually do stuff. So we're going to call the super function. Um, this is something we have to do. Well, we don't have to do it, but it's a lot cleaner. I'm going to define the steering and throttle input names at the top of the, the file here. Uh, this is because we're going to use this in multiple places. So if you make it a variable, it's less likely that you're going to mistype steer and throttle, which would uh, give you errors in your code. And so we're going to start off by binding the uh, throttle to our apply throttle function. We're going to bind the steering input to the apply steering function look is going to uh, call the look function and turn is going to do the same and then also we wanted to do the uh, handbrake as well so we're going to say player input component bind action we're going to say uh, i think it's handbrake is what i called it we're going to say when we press the handbrake key we want to call the handbrake function on handbrake pressed I'm just going to copy this and we're going to say that when you release the handbrake key we're going to call the on handbrake release function and that's pretty much all of the input that the vehicle actually needs so the nice thing about the wheeled vehicle is that um, the movement component actually does a lot of the work for us so there's very little work required on our part um, i'm going to implement all six of these functions it might seem like there's a lot to do, but these are all actually super, super simple functions. So we're going to implement the lookup, turn, apply throttle, apply steering, and the handbrake functions as well. So the apply throttle function should just grab our vehicle's movement component and tell the throttle input uh, to be whatever the value is. The steering function is literally the exact same. There's a function called uh, set steering input. So you just tell the vehicle movement component what the input should be for the steering. The lookup function is going to tell our controller to add some pitch input and this will cause the camera to actually rotate uh, up and down. And the turn function is the exact same except we're adding your input. So that's going to cause the camera to go from side to side. When you press the handbrake, we're going to uh, set the handbrake input to be true. And when you release, we're going to set the handbrake input to be false. Uh, and then the last function we need to implement is the update air control function. I'm not going to implement this just yet. We're going to go into the editor, make sure that the vehicle actually works first, and then we can come back in here and we'll, um, we'll finish off by filling this function out. So I'm going to go ahead and save and then run a uh, local Windows debugger. And let's test the vehicle out. Okay, so in this little example level, I'm just going to delete this guy. Let's get rid of these chairs. And I'll just select this uh, cube thing. And let's just set the scale to be like super big. So we'll just do like, I don't know, 20 by 20 by 20. Okay, so let's actually make our um, vehicle. So we're going to go to the C++ classes. And we're going to blueprint the vehicle so that we can set up some properties on it without having to do absolutely everything in C++. So we're going to create a blueprint class. Um, I'm just going to put it in the content folder. Call this BP underscore. And I'm going to make this a pickup truck. So I'm going to say BP underscore pickup truck. And then we'll create the blueprint class from it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to select the mesh. And um, there's one called SK pickup. So just go ahead and click on that. And so this is one of the vehicles that came with that pack that we downloaded and we'll compile and save. So before we start configuring the vehicle, um, there is something that the vehicle movement component needs and it's called uh, the wheel setup. So if you click on the vehicle movement and go to wheel setups, 
um, each wheel can be configured and we don't just want to use the default settings we want to actually set up the wheels of our vehicle so to do that we are going to uh, we'll just close this and we're going to make a new miscellaneous data asset and then you want to actually search for tire and then there's one called tire config um, so we'll create that I'm going to call this DA for data asset underscore uh, we'll just call this pickup tire config and let's open up the tire config um, I don't actually really want to do anything to it but you could change the friction of the tire if you wanted the next thing we're going to do is make a vehicle configuration class for the front and back tires this is how you configure stuff like how much each wheel should turn and stuff like that so uh, we'll open up the context menu go to blueprints blueprint class all classes and then search for vehicle wheel and we're going to create two vehicle wheels so the first one's going to be bp pickup tire front and then i'll hit control w to duplicate that and we're going to make a pickup tire rear as well we'll just save those so we're going to start by opening up the front tire <clears throat> I'm just going to copy some of the settings from my other project. So the width of the tires uh, is 18 units. This will be dependent on what your vehicle is. The steering angle for the uh, front tires is 45 degrees. We're going to select the tire config that we just made. So pick up tire config. We'll compile that and save it. Now we're going to open up the rear tires. So for the steer angle, we're going to make the rear tires 20 degrees. This will just make the steering feel a bit more responsive. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Uh, the width of the tires is going to be 18. We're going to select pick up tire config, and that's pretty much all you have to do for the tires. And so now if you open the truck blueprint back up and go to vehicle movement, we can actually configure those wheels that we added. So we're going to go to wheel setups and expand all of the wheels. Um, so we're going to start with the front left wheel. That is the first one. So just select vehicle, pick up tire front, pick up tire front. And then the second ones are pick up tire rear and pick up tire rear. It also needs to know the bone name. So this vehicle is actually a skeleton. And uh, by giving it the bone name, this will allow us to animate the wheels on the truck. So we need to do that. We're going to type in wheel front left we're going to do wheel front right we're going to do wheel rear left and then finally wheel rear right so now we'll compile that and save it i'm going to click on my spring arm as well and uh, just move it up a little bit if you select it i'm going to move it up to say 120 so that the camera's um, a little bit further back, uh, further up, sorry. And then we're going to go to the camera. And for the target arm length, I'm going to set that as being 500. Another thing that happens in GTA is as you drive away, I think the camera lags behind the vehicle slightly. And you can actually configure that really easily by going to the lag setting, enabling camera lag. And then we'll set the lag speed as 10 and uh, the, the max lag distance I'm going to set as like 100. And this means the camera won't lag too far behind the vehicle. So to test out our vehicle right away, we're just going to drag the pickup truck into the level. We're going to auto possess. So if you click on the truck and then search for possess, we're going to select auto possess player zero. And now if you hit play, you can actually drive the truck around the level. The only problem is that the tires are not animated. So how do we get the tires of the truck to animate? To do that we're going to go to the animation option we're going to make an animation blueprint which is going to control the animation of our pickup truck and there is actually a animation instance created for this very purpose so if you click on vehicle anim instance and then our skeleton which is called sk vehicle skeleton we're going to call this anim bp underscore pickup so if you open the animation blueprint up we're going to search for mesh space ref pose because the wheel handler needs this so if you search for wheel handler there's actually an animation node created by epic that will handle the wheels you used to have to individually animate the wheels which was a huge pain so it's nice that they just have a node that does it for you now 
and then you just plug that into the result. And so if we go back to our blueprint, we can actually tell the pickup truck to use that animation now. Um, so under the animation tab, just select the uh, pickup, which we called uh, animbp underscore pickup. And so now if you hit play in the level, you can see that the, uh, the truck, the wheels actually animate and turn as you would expect. So now it's time to do the in-ear movement. Okay, so it's time to do the in-ear control and also allow our car to be rolled over if we roll it upside down. Uh, the way that we're going to do this is we're calling this function update in-ear control. So let's go to this function and let's get to work. We're going to start by grabbing the vehicle's movement component. We're going to need this later on. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if our vehicle's in the air. Now there are multiple ways to check if your vehicle is in the air, but the way that I'm going to do it is I'm just going to do a line trace. If the line trace hits the ground, then we are on the ground. And if it doesn't hit anything, then we're in the air. So let's do a line trace. We're going to create some parameters to put into the line trace. We're just telling it to ignore the truck because we are checking if we're on the ground. So don't check if we're hitting the truck. That doesn't make any sense. Um, we're going to find where to start and end the trace. And basically... We know we're on the ground if our line trace hit something, and if it didn't hit something, then we're in the air. The next thing we want to check is we want to check if our vehicle is not grounded. So if our vehicle is flipped on its side or it's rolled over completely, how do we check that? Well, it's actually quite easy to check. So there's a function called dot product, and dot product will tell you if two uh, vectors align with each other. So what we can do is we can take the up vector of the car and then just compare it with the global up vector of the world. And basically, if those vectors align, then the car is fine. And if those vectors don't align, then the uh, car's rolled on its side or it's flipped over completely. So what we're going to say is we're going to say that we're not grounded if the dot product of our up vector compared with the global up vector is less than zero. So basically, we've rolled on our side or we've flipped over completely. So the reason we have to check for this stuff is because we only want to control the car if it actually is in the air or if it's not grounded. Otherwise, we shouldn't be able to roll the car around and stuff like that. So basically, if the car is in the air or it's not grounded properly, then we're going to allow the in-air movement. So um, the first thing we need to do is check how much throttle you're applying and how much steering you're applying. Because remember, we use WASD to roll the car over, which is actually just the same inputs that we're using to do the steering and the throttle and stuff. So we can just grab those values by getting the um, axis value from the input component. Next, we're going to come up with the, um, the movement force, we're going to call it. So basically, the movement force pitch is um, rolling forward and backwards, and the roll value is rolling side to side. So basically, um, I've just got a little check here. If we are flipped over, we actually need to increase the force because uh, rolling a car over from a standstill actually requires quite a lot of force. So basically, if we're in the air, we're just going to use a value of 3. But if we are flipped over completely, we're going to use 20. Otherwise, we won't actually have enough force to even roll the car over at all. Okay, so we're almost done. The last thing we do is we just grab the vehicle mesh because the vehicle mesh is actually the thing that's doing the physics. So by telling the uh, vehicle's angular velocity to change, that's how we're going to control it in the air. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come up with something called the movement vector. This is a vector that describes the um, direction or the angle that the vehicle should start moving in. So basically we're taking those input values from your throttle and your steering and we're just multiplying them against these values and putting this in a vector. We're leaving the z value as zero because we're not, we're not influencing the, uh, the yaw of the car. We're only influencing the pitch and the roll. Uh, and then we just multiply that by the uh, delta time so that it's frame rate independent. And then what we do is this uh, roll value is in world space. And we need to put it in our vehicle's local space so that no matter what direction the car faces, the, um, the angle is applied correctly. So what we do is we just say new angular movement is get the rotation of our actor and rotate this vector 
by our actors rotation so now we're getting the um, angle in our vehicle's local space lastly now that we've uh, found out our new angular movement all we do is grab the vehicle mesh and then set the angular velocity to the new movement and we just uh, set this to true so that we're adding the velocity onto the vehicle's current velocity Okay, so if we run a local Windows debugger, we're going to go ahead and test this out in the editor and actually make sure it works. So if I wasn't able to control the truck in the air, you can see that basically you just don't have any control at all. It's way harder. You're way more likely to flip the truck over. And so having the ability to just correct it in the air is way nicer. You'll also see here that if I flip my truck over, I can just use the uh, roll keys to roll it back over using A and D. And so that's a nice little feature that you have as well. Um, just stops people getting frustrated. If you flip your car over, kind of sucks to be stuck there doing absolutely nothing. So there we have it. There's a basic vehicle implementation. Uh, feel free to actually open the pickup truck up and change it to be a different mesh. I don't think there would be too much work in doing that. So like change it to like the sports car or something could be cool. But yeah, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how to make a C++ vehicle in Unreal Engine. Feel free to subscribe to the channel, do all that stuff, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.